using your resistance, what's your, what do you do? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with the rage like she's talking about? Well, it, when you when you're in purpose, the, it doesn't happen. It actually it's it's really beautiful. Like for example, I went to Argentina one time, and and uh, it was the time when the United States was dropping bombs on Baghdad, and I was down there doing all these healing gatherings and all these protests. They were burning effigies of Bush, and people were spilling out in the streets and screaming things at each other and everything. And I remember I was staying at this house, and there was a woman who was staying there, was about 30 years old, and I, I sat down to get my breakfast, and I was just sitting there eating my bowl of cereal, and she just went into her full-blown rage, like right across the table from me, uh, Florencia. She just really was just passionately enraged in this and this and this and this, and I was just eating my bowl of cereal. And then, I looked at my friend, who was David, there's another David sitting next to me, and we both started into a rendition of, of Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Don't worry, you know. Well, she just went, at first her eyes got real big, because she was in a full-blown rage, her eyes got real big, almost like in disbelief, like, this is like an inappropriate reaction to my rage. I mean, it's kind of what it looked like. And then she just burst into laughter. She went totally from total rage into bursting in laughter. And you know, in spirituality, you start to see that pretty often, where somebody can be crying and like wailing away, and then all of a sudden, they burst into laughter. Suzanne can testify to this probably in the last year. You've had some times where you've just been screaming and wailing in the deepest of pain, and then all of a sudden, just <laughs> burst into laughter. You know, it's almost, it doesn't even seem it's kind of surreal, because most people aren't used to that. There's no empathy, like you said. No. Yes. No false empathy. No false empathy. Well, there's an honor of the authenticity. I think yeah. like there, well, there was a movie out, Babies, and there's this one scene oh, yeah. where the baby, the one baby can't get the peg in the, the round peg on the coal, and, and, it, and it, he just like so upset, and he goes into this full blown like temper tantrum, face contorting, and you're just laughing in the eyes because you can relate to all these situations, <laughs> divorce, disease, that are about putting the brown thing on the peg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's this like celebration of that like release and so... Yeah, of, that's all there. And it's we all can in laugh. there, so you can, you can, it does, the laughter does come because, because you just learn that not to take it seriously. And again, it's back to that thing, like, we're all connected, so it can't be that this dualistic thing of, of, of laughter and rage, you know, aren't in the same mind. And there's only one mind, so where can the rage be? After a while, that's what makes it funny. You know, you kind of flip into a higher perspective and then all of a sudden the very thing that you're raging on yeah, is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... But the rage still exists? Rage is still there underneath, it's just that you're not dealing with, it's not being, nope. not it's, being, not if being You actually get more into this experience about the reality of love, that love is all that there is. Yeah. And you, you really, you more and more experience that consistently and consistently, then that becomes like a, like a, just radiates. You know how they talk about things being contagious, laughter being contagious, you know, and being in a room where some, People start to laugh, and then more people start to laugh, and then you've got the whole room laughing. It's, it's that way with love. Love kind of just extends and radiates. And it's really, that's how it works. So what about if the other happens? The woman's having, you know, in a rage at breakfast, you're calmly eating your bowl of cereal, and you, you laugh. You don't take it seriously. What if you have? What if that person inspired rage, her rage was infectious to you, and then instead of, holding, basically holding in love, right? You went to perturbation, and the person next to you went to perturbation, and the whole room or the whole went to perturbation. Or what if that person expired, you know, inspired the whole room to rage against a particular, you know, whatever, people or a group of people. So I'm just turning it around and saying, you hold, great. So what if people, most people I encounter, when I have my authentic feelings come out, they don't hold. They jump right into my feelings with me. I get angry, right back at me. You know, I get uh, whatever whatever emotion.
emotion I have right back at me. There's no, I don't hold in a place of detachment. So what, what does the person, right, the person who falls into the hole, it, it, I guess you, you called that last night false empathy. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, I, I remember having worked through the Course and I really asked Jesus for like a map of the mind and basically, you know, he says you will look upon that which you feel within. It, it doesn't hold for the reverse. In other words, everything that you experience in your consciousness and your awareness is reflected. Mm -hmm. but, but that's how it works. It works from the inside out. In other words, I, I actually asked Jesus, draw me a diagram of the mind. I'm interested in how this stuff all works together. Show me how perceptions and thoughts and, and emotions and beliefs and desire and all this, where does, how does it go together? And he, he actually, you know, through me, drew out this map with desire in the middle. It all starts with, with the desire. And then the belief ring came right outside of it. Then the thought ring came next. Then the emotional ring came next. Then the perceptual ring came next. So the persons, it's not understandable from the realm of persons, because they're all out in the outer ring. Uh, it seems like in this world that persons mm -hmm. can say and do things that affect other, pe other persons. Mm -hmm. The way they look, feel, think, behave. It's like, it's like that old thinking we were raised with. You hurt my feelings, you make me mad, right. you know, blah, 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 blah. Totally uh, erroneous. All those thoughts are totally erroneous, mm -hmm. false cause and effect relationships. The more you go through the mind training, the more you realize that if you are at peace, the whole universe is at peace. Because the whole universe, the whole cosmos is, is the perception. So you have a peaceful perception of the world, period. Uh, it doesn't matter if nuclear bombs are going off, or the whole planet is like in the, that latest uh, movie, uh, 2012, or we've seen a whole no. string of them. Knowing, yeah, with Nicolas Cage, the solar flare, that's even faster. <laughs> yeah, the whole wiping the world out in like, takes like five seconds or ten seconds to wipe the whole planet out. But it wouldn't even matter in that state because, again, the, you're, at peace. you're at peace and the whole universe is at peace. Yeah. So, what comes up for me is, why would you permit yourself to feel rage? Because rage, you know, peace, Rage and peace, I can't fit them together in the same headset. So when I go into rage, it takes me into my ego mind and out of peace. Peace is where my treasure is. And when I'm at peace, there could be nuclear holocaust out my window and I'm still going to be at peace. It's all just what's going on out there. But when I'm in rage, I'm in it. You know, it's like the war's out there and the war's in here. So why, why would you permit yourself? I mean, why would I allow myself to feel anger, which is a, which is attack, and you know, go into attack mode or, or rage? Well, it goes back. I said at the very core is the, the point of power or the point of prayer, and some people call that like the altar. Like, be right. careful what's on your altar. The altar is right in the middle, like the core, the heart, the center, and basically, that altar is desire, and another word for desire is want. So when I hear someone say to me, I'm feeling a lot of rage now, but I want to be in peace. Oh, no, you're feeling rage because you want to feel rage. And you believe that there's a value to rage. Why would anybody, if, if every emotion is a decision, why would anybody choose to feel rage unless they saw a value in it? A value in anger. A value in, 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 in hurt and pain and yeah. sadness and this and this. So that, that valuing, that desiring, that wanting, you know, is, is at the core. You have to get to the power of your wanting, you know, and right. it's... Why would you want rage? Why yeah. would you want anger? Why would you want anything on your altar but peace and connection at all times? Yeah. That's where the metaphysics of the Course in Miracles come in, because the only reason you could seem to want rage or anger or these emotions is, is as if it was saving you from something worse. Uh, kind of like, you know how children do that, like, don't hit me mommy, don't hit me, I'll do it to myself, don't do it to me. To mitigate, it's strange, I mean it's sick, admittedly it's sick thinking, but, but to mitigate a deeper punishment. 